Hello and welcome to my studio. I'm Gina and in today's video I'm going to be uh, continuing on experimenting with some foam core board and just seeing uh, what concrete effects that I can get out of or stone actually effects that I can get out of it. And I'm going to use this picture frame that I've got sort of a deep inset frame or what do we call them sort of a box frame. It's, it's a little bit beveled on the edge so it's, it's not perfect but I think it's going to work quite well for the project that I'm going to be tackling today. And also I'm going to be using this fan blade for some decorative elements as well as some silicon molds that I'm going to try and use possibly hot glue to try and put them in the mold because I know that that's going to be pretty stable and then I can paint them up. So what are we creating you might be asking. So I'm actually going to create a door front to so like the doors of Paris. I've got actually two frames that I can, this one's still got the glass in it, but I've got two frames that I can use and I thought I'd trial just a couple of couple of options. But they're just little mini projects that I should only take a day or two to create, but just really using them for experimenting with different materials and just seeing what I can what I can create with them. So yeah, let's uh, let's get started. So I've got an idea, I've got an inspiration piece in my mind, you would have seen it in the thumbnail of the video. And um, so just to begin with, we need to create a bit of a plan. So what I'm going to do here is just sketch out the size of the, win um, the window frame, the picture frame that I've got, and um, just sketch out the design. So just so that I can get it to fit and, and pick up all of the key features out of the inspiration piece so that I can make sure that we capture those. So now we've got our design, what we can do now is move on to the foam core board. So this is um, some cheap Dollar Tree or um, Look Sharp, which is the New Zealand equivalent. Um, the black one that I had, which I created a fountain on, which is in the previous video, um, the, the, the paper on it peeled away while it wasn't great. Um, it actually did still peel away, at least on one side. But what I found with this particular type of, with the white stuff, it just did not want to peel at all. So I gave it a good go. Um, I gently, gently tried to pull it away just from the outside and then sort of move move around. Um, but it, it just didn't want, to, didn't want to peel away at all. So what I ended up by having to do is using a lot more water and rubbing away the top surface. Um, which, like, yeah, it wasn't ideal and it did take a little bit of time when I, um, and I guess in hindsight probably what I could have done was actually made sure that I pricked the board beforehand. I don't know if you can see the shadow there, but that's our young little Loki coming in to help. Um, so yeah, I just sort of spent a little bit of time, probably more time than what I was hoping to do, but um, anyway, we got there in the end. So using the paper design that I've just drawn up, I'm just going to cut out the arch and then trace that against the foam board uh, and then just cut that out. So this is the inner one, so this is the one that goes uh, more towards the back and then I repeat the same process with the second piece of foam board which has got the slightly larger opening to it. So after layering these two pieces on top of each other, one thing I really quickly noticed was that they were just two square edges sitting atop of each other. 
and so I just needed to bevel them ever so slightly. The, the top one um, is beveled slightly less than the bottom one. The bottom one is obviously, uh, well, it is actually on more of an angle, um, which creates um, a, almost like a curved effect on the inside. It's not curved, but it almost, almost creates that shape. So what I'm doing now is actually just tracing out the design actually onto the front face of the foam board before I go through and adding in any of the finer details with um, cutting through that top layer very, very slightly, just, just a fraction through the top layer of the foam board and then going over it with a pencil just to, um, to indent the shapes that I'm looking to create. So during this build, I'm not really too sure what's happened, but I lost all of the footage of um, actually putting in the detail. But like I mentioned, just cutting through that top layer and then using, I actually use a really small ball stylus to actually put in the um, detail. I think one thing I've worked out um, is that my, my camera doesn't like to be on charge or charging while it's filming all at the same time. It just obviously has a hissy fit. And by realizing that it was trying to do too much at once. So anyway, um, we got through it, we managed to get most of the footage. So I'm just going to glue the top piece um, to the uh, back piece before I progress any further because because the, um, the, the front piece actually fits inside the frame, whereas the back piece actually fits in the outer frame. I don't know if that makes too much sense, but one is slightly smaller than the other, so I just needed to make sure that they were lined up before I kind of uh, progressed uh, any further with the project. So now they're all glued together, I can actually go through and start adding in some smaller details. These are just a couple of small foam pieces that I've just cut to size and they are just going to create some embellishments um, at the top of the arch of the doorway. Um, so I'm just going to quickly glue those um, into place and let those dry before we kind of move on. So moving on to the bit that I've been really looking forward to trialing out is using hot glue into silicon moulds. So luckily I have got a really fine tip um, hot glue gun which actually makes a huge, um, huge difference. I've got another one that doesn't heat quite as hot um, but it's got a massive um, tip on it. So these uh, silicon moulds are really fine. Um, so having the fine tip on the uh, hot glue gun itself um, was really just a blessing in disguise because I could actually force the glue into all of those really fine details. So they don't take very long to dry, just um, probably just a couple of minutes, I don't know, by the time I kind of got through all of them they were all dry, well dry enough to get out of the moulds anyway. And um, so yeah, they're pretty easy just to pop out and then um, fit them into place. I'm just placing them on here, but I do actually go back and glue them. I just don't show the step of actually gluing them into place. One thing I realised is that there was a bit of a gap at the top, um, which I didn't really love. So this was um, a test piece that I'd done um, with the hot glue, which um, made a bit of a difference. So I just cut that up and glued that into the top pieces. 
and then I'm just going to go through and add a little bit of joint compound around uh, the door frame. One of the things that I've realized, um, which I absolutely know, is to cut foam board with a sharp blade and my blade clearly wasn't sharp enough because it actually pulled at the foam board itself so it left um, some big holes so otherwise I would have hoped to have not gone through this step because um, it doesn't really give the best finish but that's okay uh, we use what we have on hand but this was a pretty quick process and it dries incredibly quickly Moving on to creating the door, I'm um, just using some uh, matte board, so it's just one millimetre thick matte board and just using the cutout that I'd um, cut out before, I'm just going to trace that onto the matte board itself. I'm not too worried about it being the right size because this is going to sit behind the foam anyway, so just as long as the bits in the middle are the right shape and size. So just cutting out the window details and then I just also cut out some long strips. So one was to go down the middle there and then the rest of them go around the outside of the uh, window on the door. Moving on to create some of the panelling that sits below the windows. So this is, we just line this up with the same width as the window and then I'm actually just going to mitre the corners. So this is um, slightly wider um, strips and then I just follow basically the same process. I've actually drawn the shape actually on the board just so that I know what to follow and then just lining it up, marking it up with a bit of pencil, cutting it out with the blade on a 45 degree and then um, gluing that into place and I just do that for each piece. I don't pre-cut them all, I just cut them to the shape that they end up being um, on the project. For the base coat I've mixed up this colour because I actually want the entire look to be more like sandstone rather than having a grey undertone. So this uh, just allows that warmth of that colour to come through and then I'm just adding some different colours so sort of a yellow and then also a sort of a rust red. And then what I do for that base coat is I just literally mix in white and just keep adding white into multiple layers, which I seem to have misplaced uh, this particular layer. But this next layer you get the idea, it's just the layering up um, lighter and lighter colours on top of each other and just stippling that sort of through with a sponge to give it more of a speckled effect. So the warmth of that base colour is definitely coming through and some of those um, yellows and reds are also coming through as well. So just while that's drying I'm going to move on to creating, uh, sorry, painting the door. So this has now all been created, it's all been built and just going to put a couple of coats of this green which I've just mixed up with um, just a couple of shades of green that I had existing um, with some white. So to add um, 
some weathering to the bottom of the door so sort of some scuff scuff effects um, sort of chipped paint uh, yeah I'm just kind of just dabbing it on just sparingly into places where I think that it would have the most wear and tear I do actually go back over it and just slightly dam dull it down a little bit because uh, when I put the whole thing together I realized that it was probably just a little bit overkill So to create the brass uh, kick plate at the bottom of the door, this is just some copy paper with uh, some gold paint and then I mix in a little bit of that same sort of rust colour, just sort of um, dab it through and just sort of brush that through just to kind of give it a little bit more of a weathered effect um, and that's, that's all I do for that. So mixing up a little bit of black paint into some water, um, I'm just wanting to create a bit of a wash over the footpath area just to create, um, pick up some of those sort of grout lines um, as well as um, just some weathering, more weathering details into the project as well. So just adding that on and then going through and sponging it off with a paper towel to try and um, get rid of that. And then also onto the um, stonework just to pick up any of those details. So now to create some tiny little handles. I've got these little um, cocktail sticks. They've got little grooves um, at the top. So I thought I'd actually use those to my advantage. And so what I've done is I've just cut those to length and I'm cutting a piece of copy paper, just a really fine strip. So the idea is that the wooden um, toothpicks will become the actual handles and the paper pieces will become the brackets that will fit up against the door. So what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting out strips and then going to loop them around the handle. I was debating whether I could try and wrap them round, but I actually needed to have both sides of the pieces of paper so I could glue those together. They're not the strongest in the world, but I'm actually going to go over and cover them with a bit of wood glue. So once the wood glue has dried, then that will actually create the strength in the handle itself. So I'm just covering um, the wood um, as well as the paper, just to add that little bit more, more strength with, um, with the glue. So once that's all dry then I'm just going to go over it with a bit of black paint. Once the black paint has dried and I'm just going to very lightly brush it with a little bit of silver and I think I actually go through and add um, a fraction, just a fraction of that uh, same rust colour just to kind of give it a little bit more character. Once the handles are all glued into place and I'm reasonably happy with them, although they kind of, I think it's just having that layer of paper and not having the amount of strength that I would have normally liked, but these are just more for decorative pieces anyway, so I'm not too worried. I'm just going to now start pulling it all together. First of all, I'm going to start um, by gluing in the back piece and then adding some other small details that I've um, created as well. I didn't worry about getting those onto video because I think it was more around the door and the um, the stone texture, um, but just adding in just just to give it a little bit more character as well.
So after adding that little junction box and the doorbell, it's time to move on to adding in the decorative pieces for the windows in the door. So we're going to use the uh, fan blades, so these are wooden flat fan blades. Um, these ones are pre-painted in black, so I haven't had to worry about having to paint them. Anytime you put moisture towards these very, very thin layers of uh, wood, they tend to warp and go in all sorts of strange shapes. So I managed to find some that were already black. And I'm just what I'm doing there is just putting a wee dry brush of white over them just to pick up some of those details in, um, in the blade itself. Otherwise, they kind of all disappear into nowhere. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of the window um, plastic in behind so that when you do look at it, um, it's, it's not completely all flat when you're looking at it. So there's the decorative piece plus the sheen of the window. And then also I'm just going to put some black cardstock in behind it. So just adding in the final finishing touches now, that's the little nameplate um, for the for the building. And then this is the wee bollard, so just making sure that nobody drives into that little junction box. So that's it, it's all finished. If you've liked this video please consider subscribing to this channel and also I've just added in a couple more videos that I think that you might enjoy. So thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.